Welcome back to Excel 2010 for Beginners, brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. This is Lesson 7 of 12. If you landed on this lesson first, you can click on the link in the video window above to start back at the beginning. In Lesson 7, we'll start to look at how to make our spreadsheets more professional. We'll learn about cell alignment, cell ranges, bold italics, and underline. Now that we know how to enter data into a spreadsheet, and edit that data, let's learn how to format the spreadsheet to make it look a little more professional. The first change I would like to make involves the column headers. Notice how January, February, March, and April line up on the left side of each cell, but the numbers underneath them line up on the right. It makes for a very messy column. This is the way that Excel was designed. Text values will always line up on the left side of a cell whereas numeric values and dates and things like currency amounts will line up on the right side of the cell. You can change the alignment of a cell using the alignment functions up here in the alignment group on the home tab. Right here you can see align left, center, and align right. So the first thing you have to do is click on the cell you want to change. In this case, I'll click on cell B1. Then come up here in the alignment group and click on align text right. That will change that cell so all the data in it lines up to the right side. This makes it so the column header lines up nicely over the data in that column. You can also click on center or align left if you'd like, but I'm going to bring it back to align right. Now don't confuse the horizontal alignment with the vertical alignment. These three buttons up here will align the value to the top, middle, or bottom of the cell if you have a tall row. And we'll see how this works in a future lesson. Now I could sit here and do each one of these cells one at a time by clicking on them and then clicking on align right. And this isn't too bad only having four cells to do. But what if I had 40 cells? That would take a long time. There has to be a more efficient way to apply a single formatting command to multiple cells. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to come up here and click on the undo button a couple times. Undo, 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 undo. And I put them all back the way they were when we started this lesson. Now it would be nice if there was a way I could change the alignment for all four of those cells with one command. In order to do that, we have to select multiple cells. You can select multiple cells by moving your mouse over the middle of the first cell, right in the middle, click and then drag to select additional cells. I've now selected a range of cells from B1 to E1. Now if I make any change, for example, align text right, it affects all of the selected cells in that range. Cell ranges can be horizontal, like that one. They can also be vertical, such as that range from A2 to A5. Or they can be both horizontal and vertical. For example, this is a range right here from C2 to E5. This range shown here from B2 to E2 is represented by B2 colon E2. And we'll see a lot more of this when we start dealing with formulas and functions. That's how you refer to a particular range. It's the starting cell colon the ending cell. This range is C3 colon D5. It starts at C3 and it goes down to D5. Now, don't worry too much about this right now. You're not going to be quizzed on it, but I just want to expose you to it so later on when we get to formulas and functions, you've seen it and you're a little more familiar with it. A cell range is simply defined by its upper left cell, followed by a colon, followed by its bottom right cell. Now, the next thing that I'd like to do is to bold my column headers. So I'll take my mouse and I'll click 
and drag to select A1 through E1. Let the mouse button go. Then I'll come up here and click on the B for Bold button in the font group on the Home tab. And that will bold all the selected cells, A1 through E1. And if I click off of them over here somewhere, it makes it easier to notice. If for any reason you decide you don't want those cells to be bolded, simply select them again and click on Bold. That turns off the Bold feature. Remember I mentioned that a little while ago. Some switches are simple toggle buttons, right? Click to turn it on, click to turn it off. I'll leave them bolded though. The same techniques work for italics and underline. Let's say you want to italicize the sales rep names. I'll select A2 through A5 and click on the italics button. I've just italicized the sales rep names. And yes, of course, you can combine bold with italics. If you want to italicize sales rep as well, you can do that. I'll turn it back off, though. This is the end of Lesson 7. You can click on the link above in the video window to jump to Lesson 8. Also, don't forget to subscribe and get notified when I release new free video tutorials. For more information on my Excel courses, visit my website at 599cd.com slash xyt2010.